just to introduce myself, I'm Anshul. I'm part of the sales team of Single Store. Uh, along with me, Ashish, who is Director of Engineering for Six Sense, uh, he, and he has been our customer for multiple years. Thank you, Ashish, for first of all uh, coming and presenting with me. Uh, and we will be talking about uh, how to do decode the winner's formula for real-time AI. And uh, everybody wants to do it, but of course, uh, uh, there's a there's a lot of points which we like to highlight. What what our customers have seen success. Uh, next slide. So so most organizations want to be closer to their end users, and for that they need modern applications that can support uh, high velocity of transaction. Uh, they also want uh, analytics in real time. They want to do in-app analytics and and also Gen AI applications are now coming in. Uh, and people want to uh, use RAC, but they want to train it on their own data. And that is a, that three points looks very simple, but it's a very complicated procedure. And uh, most organizations are, are getting into the complications of managing too many things in a, s in a data warehousing setup or a, uh, or a data platform setup. Uh, if you look around, most organizations that are successful, like Uber, like Zomato, uh, like Goldman Sachs, uh, they are able to do these three things in a very, very refined way and making it not at all complicated. And, and, but other organizations get into these kind of setups. So this looks very complicated and it's, it's complicated as well. Because when you create an application, you do two things. You, you have the first thing, you will have an OLTP database. Because uh, starting the data volumes are low and people want to start small and they will have OLTP database. As they grow as a business, they, they go into, they want to do analytics for their customers. So, so they create OLA app data warehouse. So there is one more copy of data. Then as your, as your, as your business grows, you want to do text searching, you want to do other parts, you want to do ETL, then you introduce document database. Eventually this becomes, uh, and if you want performance, you want to also have a caching layer. So eventually this setup for a typical enterprise looks like this, which is of course complicated. Uh, it creates a lot of latency and uh, it, it gets you more ina inaccuracy at times. But, but now with single store, uh, we are able to do these things in a very modern way and now I will this is the modern way or the single store way so w this is you can see on the left hand side whatever type of data that you use whether you are getting the data inside through a pipeline in real time or you want to do a batch ingest or you want to do a click stream ingest or it's just operational data you are able to do this thing in one warehouse setup or one data platform because single store does this thing in a unified way it supports spot transaction and analytics in one setup and there's a three tier architecture so you can use your uh, s3 or blob store for keeping a copy of data uh, you can keep data in memory, you can keep data in cache. So whatever your performance requirement, you are able to do these things in one setup with our three tier architecture. And the beauty here is that we support multiple types of data, base, data formats. Whether you are using JSON, time series, you want to take full text search or vectors, we are able to support this in one unified setup. And that is why the single store way is the way to go forward as your data volumes increases. Just to give you more context on what is single store. So single store is a data platform that does uh, transactional analytics as well as vector and semantic search in one setup. So you can transact, analyze and contextualize data in real time in one setup. This is very simple. We can support high throughput transaction Akamai does 12 million inserts in milliseconds on our platform. Uh, Dell is using us for their inventory management system for all their sales data. Uh, they, they process, Dell processes like 3.6 TB of data in milliseconds uh, in single store. Uh, we are able to do vectors. 
we are able to do semantic search, we are able to do image matching. So this makes single store a data platform of choice for new age organization, as well as large enterprise organizations who are willing to have a simple setup of data warehousing rather than having multiple copies of data. We are also able to do uh, RAG in a, in, a, in a very simple way. Usually RAG is now the thing that everybody wants to do. Uh, but there's a problem. When, when you train your LLM models, but uh, training, training in LLM models uh, on your own data is a bit complicated. So here you can look at it. Like if a user asks something and you have a Gen AI application, uh, the LLM will try to get trained in the data of the organization. Problem with OLTP, OLAP and vector databases setup is that the Gen AI application will get trained in different uh, data sets of uh, like the step two, step three, step four would be there, which will result in first of all, the application getting slow result or there is mismatch in the training module, which may not give you the correct answer. And that's why doing RAG with, with an enterprise setup where there are multiple data databases, it's a bit difficult. Coming to how single store does. So you ask a question, the Gen AI applications get trained in one, one data set, which is your all enterprise data and give you relevant results. This will help companies to get, first of all, uh, accurate results and faster results. And this helps people also do uh, image matchings and all those things uh, on their own data rather than on, on a open source data. And, th and that's how our customers have been doing it. So if you can, if you can see, uh, our leading customers have done simple keyword search like direct apply. I will not talk about Sixth Sense because uh, Ashish is there from Sixth Sense and he will be talking about how they have been using uh, single store for two years and have got amazing results. Goldman is using us for uh, dashboard is, uh, dashboards for high network individuals, which whenever they ask a question about their portfolio, they get meaning based uh, uh, results within within few seconds. Uh, Live ramp is there. We are also working with Dell uh, and that's and the key factor of single store is spe speed, simplicity and scale. How do we have speed? Because we are able to support fast ingestion. We are able to do full text search. Uh, simplicity because we are a database which is SQL based, but we support multiple data formats. Uh, and scale because we transact at high volumes with the backing of uh, S3 or blob store. Uh, with our universal storage. So these are the three tenants of single store that works uh, well for our customers. These are the global brands that work with single store. And to name a few, DBS Bank, Sixth Sense, Adobe, Akamai, these have been working with us uh, for past several years. Uh, we are also based uh, in India, we have a team that is growing uh, and we have a lot of customers from India as well, like Tata Communications, Factors.ai. Six Sense, Zoom Info, these are all India-based customers. I want to talk about Six Sense briefly uh, before Ashish goes into that. They have been powering interactive queries uh, of their revenue AI customer portal with us. Uh, they previously they had uh, poor query performance. They were their scaling was limited. Uh, the concurrency was limited as well. Uh, but af uh, but after using Single Store. Uh, the TCO improved, they were able to get 3x, 5x customer uh, query performance and, and overall they were able to combine multiple databases from Hadoop, Presto, MySQL into single store. Uh, and, and that's why Ashish is here because otherwise your customer will not come and speak in a public forum uh, on this. So I will hand it over to Ashish and he will talk about single store now. Thank you. Thanks, Anshul. Hey, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, myself, Ashish. Ashish Kumar. Uh, I lead data platform and data engineering practices in Sixth Sense. Uh, it's been you know around three years for me working with Sixth Sense. And before Sixth Sense, I was working for uh, Qbol and Ola Caps in my past experience. Uh, there also, I was leading you know uh, big data and AIML practices. 
So how many of you have heard about Sixth Sense? It's a B2B company. So I'm not expecting you know, anybody to know about it, but yeah, one hand. All right, so let me just talk about what exactly this company is. Uh, then we can you know, chime in into the uh, technical stuff of it. Okay, so if I have to oversimplify this Sixth Sense, uh, Sixth Sense uh, is a product which helps its customer to find their customer. Very simple. So uh, it's a B2B revolution which was founded almost a decade back by two gentlemen, Viral and Premal. Uh, and then this particular product has been supporting since the, you know, its uh, uh, I would say invention. Uh, sales persona, marketing persona, sales ops, marketing ops, and then BDR. So it's actually, you know, uh, I would say the dream product offering for uh, uh, business persona. Anshul, I think, uh, is already using it. So we are custom for uh, a single store, and single store is custom for us as well. All right. Uh, so what do you do exactly, right? So if you just think about this persona, like sales persona and you know marketing persona, what they do in their their daily life, right? So they just reach out to the prospect. Their ultimate goal is to you know figure out the prospect pipeline, right? So they will reach out to the prospect by you know cold calls, you know cold emails, uh, ads, campaign, and the typical you know uh, you know methodologies of inbound and outbound, you know. So in that case, what exactly they do? They always you know shoot in the dark, right? Because they don't have any relevance. So they just you know figure out you know those details right from somewhere and they start you know reaching out to the prospect without knowing what will be the ROI on that, right? So then in this case, Sixth Sense actually help right the customer who are actually you know willing to find out more customer. So how does it work, right? So Sixth Sense uh, receive data from various places. So if I have to summarize some of those, so we receive third-party intent data. We have you know, uh, customer CRM data like Salesforce data, HubSpot data. And then we also receive you know, uh, data from our partners like you know, uh, Firmograph, Technograph, you know, uh, people data, company data, whatnot. So we receive huge amount of data from different places and uh, then try to you know, process that data in our very scalable data platform, which I'll be you know, covering in a moment. And uh, after processing that data, we apply a lot of you know, uh, patented AI ML algorithm on top of it to figure out the insights. So if I have to again simplify those insights uh, in this call, uh, let's say you are my customer, right? And uh, you would like to know who is actually interested in your uh, product. So after doing all this data you know, uh, processing and applying all those AI ML algorithm, we can tell you who is visiting your, your website, which part of, uh, you know, uh, which part of your uh, pr product is getting a lot of traction in the market, and uh, you are part of which campaign, are you getting searched online or not. So we do a lot of you know, those uh, uh, you know, uh, re research for you and provide all those insights. So I can give you a very simple example. When any you know, uh, user visit any random website, and let's say this is your website, uh, you won't be getting you know those insights right with, with respect to you know the detailing right. So the generally you know the user will be anonymous right, and you don't know who actually visited your website. So in that case, with the help of our insights, we can tell you this particular user was from X Y Z company. He actually you know that uh, that particular user is interested in X Y Z technologies, and also right uh, you know he's looking for product like you know like yours. So in that case, uh, you know we can provide all those you know insights, and uh, you would be you know, having appropriate cost, uh, prospect pipeline to target. Instead of shooting at the dark, uh, you know, in the dark, you can just, you know, be very focused, you know, on the, on the accounts, which are going to help you, right, uh, to get the value, you know, uh, at maximum. So as I said, so we are supporting personas like marketing, sales, uh, marketing ops, and sales ops. So what exactly you do, uh, you receive eventually uh, with uh, six cents. So you'll be getting more opportunities, more customer wins. You'll be having larger deals, uh, shorter cycle, right, for your whole uh, uh, prospect pipeline. Okay, so this is the tech talk. So I don't want to spend too much time talking about uh, six cents. Uh, so I was talking about data platform, right? So we receive data from customer, partner, a lot of data. So we have around 2,000 uh, plus customers worldwide, and uh, we process data from those customer and partner in our data platform, which is serving around millions of data pipelines every day. So when I say millions of pipeline, what does it mean? So one, uh, you know, data pipeline you can think of 
uh, you know, the combination of multiple, uh, you know, jobs and queries, right? It could be the combination of a Spark, Trino, single store, uh, you know, then probably uh, some basic Java code or, you know, Python scripts, right? So that way, one pipeline itself could be, you know, combination of multiple, uh, you know, queries and uh, uh, data processing. But we have similarly, I mean, similar, uh, in a similar fashion, we have uh, around millions of data pipeline. So you can think of, you know, the scale we are dealing with at the moment. So uh, we are m mostly using, you know, Spark and uh, High for our, uh, you know, backend data processing. And uh, at PCARDS, we run around 60 to 70,000 cores, which is again very huge. Uh, I have worked with a lot of companies, so I have not seen that kind of skill rate very often. And then uh, if we talk about the ad hoc queries, uh, I'll talk, come on single story in a moment, but uh, this is something which is our Trino footprint. Presto on Trino, if you have heard about that, those are like, you know, the federated query engines, uh, which can give you a result, you know, in the single digit second time. So we run around 3 million plus queries uh, in a day. So our journey, uh, so as I said, right, we started a decade back and uh, Anshul was also talking about that, right? So when you start, you always, you know, uh, have limited number of customer, limited number of data, limited number of budget, right, for sure. So in that case, you start with very simple, low hanging, you know, solutions like MySQL. And uh, maybe, you know, in a year or two, you'll start realizing well, it's not gonna be scaling for your, uh, you know, uh, more customer and more data. So in that case, start talking about, uh, you know, th talking about uh, multiple other solutions like uh, NoSQL databases, then, you know, data warehouses, and probably, you know, some uh, solutions like uh, uh, Trino, right, for faster processing, uh, 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 you know, and the response time. Then, uh, I would say, you know, uh, I joined six and three years back, and when I joined, I was told to, you know, figure out a solution which can complement our whole, you know, uh, complex uh, data platform. So when I started researching about, you know, the solutioning, uh, I found there were a lot of solutions available which can provide, uh, you know, you for faster response time and concurrent read-write, you know, experience for the customer. But uh, it was a long journey, I would say. It took around nine months' time for us to come up with a you know, solution, like single store. If I have to name you a few of those, like uh, uh, we tried out uh, Redshift, uh, Snowflake, and then we tried out uh, Yellowbricks Data, XSOL, uh, Firebolt, a lot of names, right? And then processing, next generation processing engines like, you know, Apache Imply and then Apache Pino, which is again a storage system. And then, you know, uh, Apache Druid, uh, sorry, uh, Apache Dreamio. So a lot of options were there. And uh, we tried out so many things. And after, you know, the marathon evolution of nine months to 12 months, we came up with, uh, you know, solution uh, single store. So before single store, this is how it, it used to look like. Uh, for our backend processing, uh, we we were relying on MySQL for all the metadata management, as well as uh, you know all the customer specific data, like uh, how many customer, how many user, you know metadata of uh, those users. So we were using MySQL for that purpose, and then Hadoop was the actually you know the backend for uh, the whole backend process, you know uh, data processing. And then after processing data, we were just using Trino and HBase for our serving our customer. So if you have, uh, uh, you know, experience Trino and HBase, those are really great solutions for, uh, you know, solving your problem at a scale. But that those solutions cannot give a response time in single digit second, you know, and pro probably, you know, in the millisecond, right, most of the time. So in that case, uh, I would say the whole, uh, you know, uh, yellow box and the Trino and HBase, HBase box are scalable enough to deal with any data at a scale. But the only challenge is, you know, you know when you start expecting performance time in single digit millisecond, or maybe, you know, uh, uh, single second, milli uh, single digit second, then that those solution won't work. So for the faster response time, those solutions are gonna be, you know, tricky to handle at a scale. So, uh, of course, right, I talked about, I named, you know, few solutions, you would be thinking why, you know, I'm saying you know, those solutions are not uh, uh, good. Uh, like, those are like big name, right? I'm not saying those solutions are, you know, bad, right? But in this particular slide, if you just notice, uh, I basically, you know, I'm trying to cover the challenges which we had, right, before, you know, uh, uh, selecting single store. And then you can decide, right, which solution is gonna be working for these challenges, right, which I'm gonna be talking about. So the first thing is single source of truth. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, if you think about, uh, you know, the very complex data platform, having a single source source of truth is always, you know, uh, going to be a challenging, you know, uh, item. 
So why I'm saying this, because when you have a data pipeline, you will be having multiple hops in your data processing pipeline, right? So you are receiving data, let's say, from your customer or partner. You have to do a lot of steps right in the middle to come up with the actual result, right, to serve your customer, right? So in that case, let's say there are, you know, multiple customer services running uh, on top of your data, and they are dependent on, you know, different uh, stages of the, you know, uh, data pipeline. So in that case, for, from per customer's, you know, perspective, it's going to be really challenging, you know, to have a single, uh, you know, uh, uh, consistent data, uh, uh, you know, uh, view for, for all the APIs because uh, you will be having, uh, you know, you will be taking some time to process your raw data or CMI raw data, which is coming from the, you know, third party or customer to actually, you know, uh, deliver that uh, end result right for the customer. So let's say if you're taking six hours time, right, for whole data processing end to end, so for that six hour window, you'd be having data discrepancy, right, if the uh, customer services are dependent on different hops uh, result. That is from the customer point of view, right? Second thing is from developer's point of view, right? I, I, to, I just mentioned, you know, uh, some technologies like uh, HBase, uh, HFS, S3, um, uh, you know, and then MySQL. If you have a lot of, you know, tech stack at the back end, for any developer to build something new is always going to be challenging. First of all, skill is a big challenge, you know, right? If you're having, let's say, 100, 100 engineers or 200 engineers in your, in your startup, all of them won't be comfortable with, uh, you know, uh, working with all those, you know, uh, backend technologies, right? Database technologies, right? So in that, they might be knowing a couple of databases, but beyond that, it's going to be very tough, right, for everybody to understand those complexity of the big data, you know, technologies. So in that case, if they have only one, you know, backend solution for serving our customer, like single store, so they can, you know, uh, basically, you know, perform their POC is faster, they can deliver a uh, product faster, develop pe feature faster, they can fail faster, right? So that way, uh, if you have single source of truth and single, you know, backend for the customer facing, you know, application, it can easily, you know, help, uh, you know, your developers to deliver things faster. Then second thing is scalable and fast uh, batch and real time ingestion. So generally people say in big data, you know, ecosystem, uh, you know, you write once and read many times. but in nowadays, it's very difficult, right? You cannot just say that, right? Because you're receiving data from your customer and partner every day. So you have to ingest your data almost every day, I mean, probably every hour, right, in, in your, you know, uh, data serving layer, right? And in that case, uh, uh, it is going to be very challenging if you are using any NoSQL databases. I have tried out many in my experience. And if you have to write, let's say, 25 to 30 terabyte data in a data warehouse or an analytical database system, it's going to be taking a lot of time, right? And at the same time, you have to serve your customer from the same database, right? So concurrent read write is a big challenge for any, you know, uh, company which is, uh, you know, I would say uh, data driven, right? It, this is going to be a big challenge, right? Because you have to just, you know, serve your data almost real time to the customer. And if you are having a scale, it's going to be very challenging. So in that case, you know, in single store, we are ingesting around uh, 20 to 25 terabyte data every day. I'm not talking about our data processing. That is like, you know, hundreds of terabytes every day. Uh, then the third one is fast query response time. Uh, so of course, right, I just talked about Trino and HBase. They, those solutions work really well for uh, scalability, but performance-wise, uh, you would be struggling if you are expecting, you know, uh, millisecond response time, right? So in that case, with the help of, uh, you know, uh, uh, typical databases features like, you know, sharding, partitioning, sorting, you know, uh, and then hashing, and then, uh, uh, caching, right? Of course, the single store, you know, also support caching. So all these features actually, you know, enable you to have faster response time. So in that case, you can say, right, what exactly, you know, uh, your hot data, and you want to, ha I mean, you have to, you know, have appropriate, uh, you know, uh, sharding and partitioning strategies of your data, and then uh, sorting key, hashing key will definitely help you to achieve, you know, faster response time with single store. Uh, I already already covered high concurrency and you know horizontal scalability. Uh, concurrency is the key because we are talking about you know uh, huge number of queries coming into your uh, uh, system, and all those queries are data intensive, right? So even for let's say 100 or 200 uh, you know uh, queries per second, if all those queries are data intensive, it is very tough to you know uh, support those kind of you know, workload. So high concurrency and high uh, you know is going to be uh, achieved with single store easily because of the feature I just talked about. And then horizontal scalability, it is not, I should say, unique to a single store, but like the typical, you know, uh, I would say, uh, horizontally scalable system where you can have multiple cluster, multiple workspaces, you know, and then uh, you can have master, then workers, for uh, you can have dedicated, you know, uh, set of right for writing and reading. So those things are uh, very much possible in single store. Then the, f uh, the fifth point is low maintenance. Maintenance, uh, if you have 
10 number of components in the back end to support your, support your customer. Every now and then, some component will go for a toss, and you will be having bad experiences for your customer, right? So I just named many right in my discussion. So if you are supporting uh, with uh, your customer, with, let's say, you know, with uh, HPS on Trino kind of solution, so in the back end, you would be having Trino, then HPS, then HDFS, then S3, then Metastore, then if you are using Glue Catalog or something like that. So there are a lot of, you know, uh, back end components which you have to take care of. Right, and we are having very big challenge with our, uh, you know, uh, MySQL Metastore, which we are uh, using for Hive uh, data warehouse, and scaling, scaling that particular, you know, single point of failure, fail, you know, failure component is a very challenging task. So we just wanted to have something, you know, which can reduce the maintenance effort for us and, you know, give better experience for our customer. Then uh, in this slide, BI connectivity is the last one. Uh, you know, this is like again the typical you know feature which we which you can get anywhere. So we are having our own enterprise data warehouse for our internal data, uh, which is again right hosted on single store. That is not for a scale. That is, that is just for ease of use, right? Because we are having business users, uh, you know, product users, uh, BAs, DAs. They have you know some daily routine, right, for uh, doing some data analysis. So for those uh, you know personas, we are using uh, enterprise data warehouse, which is hosted on. Uh, uh, single store and the uh, front end is Tableau and uh, you know uh, Superset and DBWare. One thing which is not mentioned, uh, sorry Anshul for that. <laughs> so we are also you know uh, utilizing a single store for our uh, GNI initiatives. So since last one year we have been investing a lot in our GNI. So uh, I talked about some persona, right? So one of the feature I have to just you know uh, give example. So I, I'm as a salesperson if I'm using you know single store product. So if I just you know log in into the website, I can give this you know receive the summary right. What exactly I'm supposed to do right in my whole day? Like which account, uh, which accounts are hot? You know what what is, what stage those accounts are? Should I you know send email or should I just you know wait? So all those summary you can get right for uh, you know from our GNI of, uh, you know offering. How single store is helping in, in such features? So we are using vector DB of single store for you know uh, storing all our uh, model data which i just talked uh, you know talked about initially right uh, we are having a lot of aiml so whatever model data is there and if we have to serve our customer uh, fast with those model data so we are storing that in our vector db uh, on single store so yeah after single store this is how it looks like uh, we you know removed those uh, uh, middle layer of uh, trino and hbase and now single store is used for serving uh, marketing sales and ops uh, you know use cases uh, i would say this is still you know uh, uh, journey uh, still you know ongoing journey uh, we are still you know working on this migration part uh, and uh, i would say you know we still we you know having all the footprint of hadoop spark trino presto everything is there along with single store that was the you know missing piece of the jigsaw right when I joined the company. Now it is I think complete I would say. <laughs> right. And the impact and result. So performance is no brainer, right? When you have uh, you know uh, indexing, caching, you know, sharding, partitioning, sorting, all those techniques, you can get better performance. And that's what we are you receiving, you know, from single store. Uh, time to market I covered right in my uh, you know last slide. Uh, if you have a single backend to support, you can easily you know uh, have faster development time, and you can fail fast as well. Uh, lower TCO. Uh, again, this is uh, something which uh, we were not expecting, but we were able to achieve. So we were managing a lot of components. It was on uh, it was an overhead right for custom facing application with single store. It's a managed solution, so we are not actually you know uh, spending too much for maintenance. So that that's you know how that's how you know we are able to uh, save cost over there. All right. So yeah, this is pretty much uh, from my side. Uh, Anshul, over to you. So if you have questions, we have five ten minutes. We can. Uh, uh, we have enough time, right? To yeah, take we can anything. And also, there's a sign up link here. If and there's a booth outside. Please visit our booth. Uh, talk to us. Uh, Ashish would also be there for some time and sign up on the online version of single store you can the trial is free and we are open for questions yep you mentioned that the uh, bi front end for all of this was tableau uh, dbware etc uh, does this also power the six sense application yes the entirety of the application. Yeah, I mentioned right. Ma yeah, marketing, sales, all those features, right? We are uh, using single store as backend. Just out of curiosity, what kind of concurrency, what kind of SLA does that application demand? 
okay so it's a b2b as i said right so it won't be like you know the scale of b2c but the one thing which is uh, noticeable here is even in b2b our queries are very much data intensive so even though if you have to serve you know 200 or 500 uh, you know queries per second you those queries will be dealing with huge data set right because we are storing semi process data not complete completely processed data in single store so in that case you know even that scale is going to be you know uh, big to achieve and still talking sub second yes Again, right? I, you know, we, we can debate. I, if some customer is asking for some report which is processing two years data, it cannot be in some millisecond, right? Wait, so yeah, but in, ge in general, yeah, you're right. P99 is going to be. Web dashboards are subject. Yes. And yes. Okay, and millions of record, and in some cases, billions of record if you have the model appropriate. Um, so the same single store right now powers your API calls also, is it? Yes. Uh, so it's sort of like, like one stop. For you guys, I would say it's a combination of MySQL and single store. So still, you know, for some of the metadata, we are using MySQL, right? Uh, which is again, right, going to be pretty fast. For but for the data intensive queries, we are using single store. This probably is more of a single store question, but since you guys have worked with it, technically, uh, how do you uh, visualize single store as a uh, uh, data store for transactions like, uh, as a replacement for standard OLTPs? I think I have heard about those, you know, uh, use cases from single store, but Sixth Sense is not using it for traditional purposes. Thank you. Hey, hi, Ashish. Uh, yeah. Can you give a little bit perspective if your cost got reduced before coming to single store or it got increased? If it increased or got reduced, so by how much percentage was the impact for your scale? Okay, so uh, I, I, you can see 5x again, right? Uh, we can debate on that, but uh, cost-wise, I would say we have, you know, we are seeing uh, some reduction for sure, right? As, but as, as I said, right, it's still an ongoing journey. So until we migrate completely to single store for our, you know, customer-facing application, it's tough to give the exact number. But we are, we were able to reduce, you know, the cost of Trino, which was like very pretty expensive. We were running around 500 nodes, right, for Trino, which is again, right, not that uh, common. For Jan, I mentioned, right, we are having 70,000 cores at PCAR, which is again pretty, you know, uh, expensive. So if we can just cut short those extra processing of data from Jan and Trino side and just have semi-processed data in single store, then we can, you know, cut short the cost of those extra processing, right? So that's what we are saving. Exact number is going to be uh, tough to commit, but in, all in, all in our initial, you know, I would say uh, uh, migration phase, we found it is uh, 3 to 5x based on the workload. That's great. And but again, right, uh, it's, it's all about the scale, right? We have massive scale of data processing, so that's why we are seeing that much advantage. You may see l less or more. But I would say, you know, it's more about, uh, you know, uh, the typical challenges of, uh, you know, concurrent read, write, and, you know, having the best performance for your customer. So I would, you know, uh, echo this solution for that purpose. And you mentioned about the sub second or in the microsecond yeah. response. Yes. So that is from the single store to your sales or marketing team. APIs, yes. Can you give a glimpse of the uh, lag from the source data going up to the sales and marketing team via the uh, single store? What is the actual time that takes? Uh, okay, the time you're talking about, right? Yeah. So this is the one, right? Yes. So for metadata, we are receiving uh, real time in MySQL, right? And uh, there are some data sets which we receive, uh, uh, you know, every hour, some of the data sets which we receive every day, right? So uh, we, uh, as I said, right, we pro have millions of data pipelines. So I would say it's a B2B offering. So it doesn't matter if you are doing it uh, real time or near real time. So some of the use cases, uh, for some of the use cases, we are having real time data directly going to single store, it's keeping this Hadoop uh, you know, layer. But I would say 90% data is going via that channel. If, if something is going via that channel, it will be delayed by a day. So yeah, so the, the typical flow is, for uh, some of, I would say, 5 to 10% use cases where we have to serve our customer real time, we are directly ing you know, ingesting data into single store, but 90% of the use cases are dependent on Hadoop data processing layer. So that will be delayed right, by you know, 6 hours, 12 hours, and 24 hours based on the use cases. Recent initiatives about the Gen AI. So apart from that, have you guys also been using this for training your own ML models and stuff like that? Uh, right? Not yet. We will take one more question if anybody has or we will end. Yep. Hi, uh, 
thank you, Ashish. So is this actually decoupling the compute from the data? That's my first question. And uh, the second is, suppose you ingest this data in single store, can you actually migrate this data in terms of open data format? Um, yeah. Okay, so I didn't get the first question. You mentioned? So single store, I think I actually missed the first part in case if it was covered. So I just uh, got delayed. So sorry about that. So my question is, does single store provide a decomputed, like where the computer is separated okay, from okay, the okay. store? Yeah, definitely. I think, yes. you know what, um, it's a, it's, it is having a decoupled architecture, right? So what happens uh, behind the scenes, single store uses uh, S3 or whatever cloud storage you are having. So uh, S3 is going to be the backend for, we call it bottomless TV, which is like infinite storage. Uh, but you can decide what should be the compute, you know, size. Let's see, you can say, you know, I need, you know, 100 cores or 200 cores. They have some different terminology like S1, S12. Yes. So those are like, you know, uh, the compute power. So once you say, I, you know, I'm basically hosting these particular use cases, they have uh, some intelligence to, you know, uh, cache your data from your bottomless TV into your SSDs and, you know, uh, memory. So, so what we do is that we can store your data in memory, cache, and your uh, object store. And it's our uh, algorithm that makes sure that you don't uh, you don't miss your SLA, but uh, the data that needs to go in uh, the cloud storage goes. So you cover the cost, but you get the. It's a three yeah, it's a three layer architecture uh, okay. with LRU enabled. Okay, so I I guess that as a follow up that there is some pre processing that is needed. Uh, before you ingest that data ba into uh, single storage. Yeah, so it depends on you know, the kind of use cases. As I yeah. said, right, 5-10% we are directly ingesting yeah. our uh, you know actual data, which is mm -hmm. coming from the customer. But 90% mm -hmm. time it, is, it has to be processed or semi-processed. Okay, got it. And uh, how does it compare in terms of the cost? Uh, let's say with commodity hardware uh, where you have this uh, you know offloaded batch analytics using Hadoop or uh, like even Spark based ingestions and so on. So how does it compare from an uh, analytics perspective? Okay, cost? so I would say you know it cannot replace Spark, right? Okay. I think I mentioned that. So okay. we're still having you know our Hadoop ecosystem. You can see after single store, okay. right? But the s the layer which we are using for serving our customer that was replaced by single store, got it. right? So it cannot replace, you know, uh, Hadoop, Hive, or uh, say Spark kind of solution. You still have to do a lot of, you know, heavy lifting of data, right? In those solutions, that is going to be, you know, uh, optimized. But you can afford to have semi-processed data in single store. There, you can run some complex query to serve your customer. So is this right to say? Uh, sorry, you can stop me if I'm taking a long time. Uh, but, I can uh, see time is uh, three minutes. <laughs> okay, sure. So is this comparable to like an OLAP style analytics on top of your store? So where you, um, you know, I know that you mentioned uh, 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 marketing sales as some of the use cases. So is this comparable to OLAP style use cases? But not in real time though. No, no. O OLAP Slice and dice capability, roll up, roll down. And I, I would say, you know, it can serve both, right? OLAP and OLTP both. Okay, got right. it. Thank you.